My thoughts for Bank M&A in 2023 is much of the same that started in 2022. Cautious buyers, leery of their stock price, worried about credit, worried about deposit runoff, and et, et cetera. Uh, sellers are gonna be patient if they can, waiting for higher prices. So we will see a decreased number of transactions in 2023, probably up to maybe 150. I think the factors that start putting pressure on bank M&A in 2022 will become accelerated in 2023. Rising interest rates, uh, concerns about credit, particularly with consumers, uh, uh, credit issues, credit issues outside the banking industry that filter into the banking industry, uh, technology, deposit runoff, all of these things will become more of an issue in 2023 than they are now. A rising rate environment can impact both a buyer and a seller's ability to do a deal in 2023 from several standpoints. One, the mark to market on a securities portfolio. Two, rising rates slow down loan demand and cause increasing issues with consumers and some CNI business. And then lastly, as deposits find uh, better opportunities for yield in the market, will they stay with the bank? So a buyer has to be very, very careful in buying uh, a, a seller in that instance. In addition to financing and acquisition is gonna go up with rising rates. I expect in 2023, non-bank M&A to increase in demand particularly since banks uh, will have less regulatory pressure and headwinds on buying those. It, it increases their uh, opportunity to diversify their income stream and prices should be low because of rising rates and pressure on some of those lines of business, particularly assets under management and wealth management and slowdown in mortgage business. Banks purchasing FinTech have a great opportunity to increase the value of their franchise, not only from a valuation standpoint, but from a value added and synergistic and competitive standpoint. Now, whether they participate in whole or minority or through funds uh, or all of the above depends on the bank, but most of them don't have the expertise to do it and they need to be very, very careful in doing so. Banks that are focused on organic growth need to start with capital. And I mean capital at the holding company level, not five, six or 7%, but more like eight to 10%. That's what's gonna make investors feel good. That's gonna give you opportunities in a recession to acquire problem banks, expand, get new customers, expand on technology, people, all kinds of things. Start with capital.